，将军必将遭到全面和彻底的失败。When it comes to climate change and and you know global biodiversity, we have exactly the same interests, and those are global problems that that are only solved by countries working in concert and and because of their their shared interests. <laughs> Mr. Brown, welcome to China. Thank you. I think uh, Impossible Foods is becoming possible and also is having great potential. How would you describe Impossible Foods today? Um, I think the most important thing to understand about Impossible Foods is the reason that I founded the company. I was not interested in going into business. I didn't know much about food, but um, as a scientist, I had realized that uh, the use of animals as a food technology, animal agriculture and uh, the fishing industry and so forth, uh, it, it's the most destructive technology on earth. And the only way that we are going to prevent a uh, complete collapse of global biodiversity, which is pretty far along right now. Um, and, uh, you know, climate change reaching a, a disastrous point. Uh, both of those absolutely require that we drastically reduce uh, the use of animals in the food system. I'm happy to discuss that. But um, I also realize that we're not going to solve the problem by regulation. You can't tell people what to eat. The way to solve the problem is to recognize that uh, it's not it's it's a technology problem. Just because we've always made meat the way uh, with animals doesn't mean that we can't make meat and even better meat by using other methods. That's what I believe. And so um, I had been a professor for 25 years at Stanford um, in the medical school, um, but I just and I had the best job in the world, but I just quit that job and uh, decide I'm going to found a company to develop the technology platform to make animals obsolete in the food system and create products that um, do a better job of serving consumers. Um, meat and fish and dairy foods, right now we're focusing on meat, that's more delicious, that's possible, um, better nutritionally, healthier, more affordable, and vastly more sustainable than the animal-based system. If we can do that and just put them in the market and let consumers choose, um, the market will take care of the rest. And that industry will go away because they've been replaced by better technology. So the meat impossible foods will produce or is producing will have a certain element of healing in it. Yeah. And people eating the impossible foods meat will taste almost exactly or exactly like when they eat meat. We're not going to be able to force anyone to buy our products. We have to make something better. The number one thing we have to do is make it more delicious. And I'll just say, let me just say one more thing. We have two more products that are uh, um, brand new. Uh, we're going to release them in Hong Kong this year. One is ground pork, okay? We did a test in Hong Kong with Hong Kong consumers and, and Hong Kong chefs. And we gave them impossible pork and they compared it to pork from a pig. And it was blind. They didn't know which was which. And a majority of the people who were tasting preferred the impossible pork, including the chefs. So that's what we have to do. That's how we succeed. We do a better job of serving consumers and giving them what they want. Be produced into meat. Uh, is that mainly soybean or other sources? That's a very good question. So right now, um, the major source of protein in our products is from soybean. Um, We've figured out some special ways 
to isolate especially pure protein from soybeans so that it doesn't taste like soybeans, okay? Usually, if you taste protein from soybeans, you can tell it's from soybeans, it tastes like soybeans. Um, but people don't want their meat to taste like soybeans. So there's some technology involved in getting especially pure soy protein. And, um, and then there's things we need to do to give it the right texture and, and juiciness and stuff like that. But yes, mainly soybeans. And I think uh, what you are doing will have a major impact on achieving uh, carbon neutrality and uh, carbon peaking. And these okay. two goals are very important for mankind as a whole, but also very important for China. The goal is 2030 for carbon peaking and then 2060 for I think that's, carbon neutrality. I think that's great. I love that goal. And uh, it's, it's, I wish everybody in the world would commit to that, but um, it's, it's, as you know very well, it's absolutely essential. And we want to help, and the world has to do it. If China is the only country that does it, or if the U.S. is the only country that does it, China and the rest of the world is, is, is suffering from the global problem, okay? So everybody has to do it. But, but uh, the, the thing about um, the technology we're developing is, and it, it, it only works if consumers want it. You know, it's market-driven. You know, nobody has to eat our products. But if it works, um, it's a global... Um, it's a global source of greenhouse gases that, that can, um, can be replaced by a market-based approach, and, and that benefits everybody in the world. You may know China-U.S. relations is in a difficult period. However, there are very wise U.S. companies and business people who continue to come to China. Tesla is one example. Yeah. They set up one of the largest uh, uh, e vehicle plants in Shanghai yes. and has been very successful. Yes. Do you think uh, coming to China eventually, Impossible Foods, can also be a major step in that direction? That is to promote cooperation, good understanding, and goodwill between the two countries, and eventually the success of your research and uh, entrepreneurship uh, started in the United States can be shared by other countries, in particular the largest consumer country here in China. Of course. So I think the only way that we can establish an industry in China is by making it, uh, you know, we develop the technology, but, but the industry basically has to be Chinese workers and farmers and Chinese partners um, scaling it. That's, that it has to be a partnership, okay? And I think, you know, the U.S. and China, or let's say the people of the U.S. and China, are 90% similar in all the ways that matter, okay? I think that everybody just focuses on all the differences. And the differences are important, and I'm not trying to wash them under the rug. But I think that's just something important to remember. And when it comes to climate change, and, and, you know, global biodiversity, we have exactly the same interests. And those are global problems that, that are only solved by countries working in concert and, and because of their, their shared interests. And I think it's, it's just an interesting thing in, in, in general about U.S.-China uh, relations is that, you know, where the progress is made is by focusing on the many areas in which we agree, okay? There are areas in which we disagree and we'll, 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 we'll debate them and try to work them out and so forth. But meanwhile, there's all these things that, that, that we're not arguing about. So let's, let's at least make those work, okay? And I think that this is an example of that. This is, a, this is an area in which we can do something that's good for the U.S., good for China, and good for the world. Well, Mr. Brown, you are a scientist. But if you indulge in a dream, what will be your biggest dream about Impossible Foods going forward? I, well, I guess what I would say is, you know, Impossible Foods for me is, is honestly less about business. It has to, to succeed, it has to succeed in the marketplace to achieve our mission. But it's about um, our mission to um, basically, you know, turn back the clock on climate change and, and on uh, global biodiversity. And, and that's my dream is that, I guess, 
if in uh, 10 or 15 years um, we are not looking at this race toward catastrophe with climate and, and the collapse of biodiversity, and I've been able to contribute to helping to solve that problem, okay, that would be my dream. And that my kids and grandkids li can live on a planet that's at least as good as the one that we're living on now. Thank you very much. I wish your dream come true. Thank okay, you, thank Mr. You. Brown. Thank you. 今天就聊到这儿，谢谢大家关注高谈博论，也请大家关注、点赞、转发高谈博论的节目，我们下次再聊。